It's early morning here in Charleston, West Virginia, and I have not been to sleep. Um, I got some distressing news yesterday, and I thought, oh, how's my family going to deal with this? And um, But I thought, you know what? As I laid awake last night, and I was trying to encourage myself in the Lord, but you know, you get through that self-pity kind of place where you're just feeling really sorry for yourself, and everybody else is saying, just have faith, pray, God's going to work it out. He knows all about it. And you're thinking, that's great, and I understand that, but I'm in this trial, and I can't seem to get it. And But I began to think about um, faith. And I thought, that's where we're missing so much stuff is because we lack faith. And, you know, the scripture says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find any faith on earth? You know, we're losing our faith in God. We're losing our faith that he can do exactly what we have always believed. We're so consumed with thinking about numbers and music and and all this other stuff, and that's all well and great. But what we have got to concentrate on is faith. God's people needs more faith. And I'm preaching to myself. I'm, I'm, I'm literally, this message is for me. But I wanted to share it because I'm sure I'm not the only person out there that lacks faith at times. I was thinking about the scripture in Matthew 6.30. And it says, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is, cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? As I read that scripture, the Lord kept saying, you have little faith. You don't have big enough faith. It's smaller than that mustard seed. It's non-existent. And I thought, you know what, God? You are right. You are right. And then I thought about the verse told in Matthew 8.10. And it says, when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Israel, God's chosen people. And God was talking, and he said that he had not even found that kind of faith in among his people. Then I thought about Mark 40. All these scriptures just started coming to my head and I was just like, Lord, thank you for your word. I'm glad you still talk to me. I'm glad that even though sometimes I'm so unworthy that you still spend your time with me. And he said, spend more time with me and I'll spend more time with you. And I thought, you know, that's right. That's right. You know, when you're in a relationship, you want that person to spend time with you. You want to hear them. You want to talk to them. You want to touch them. You want to feel that they love you, that they care. And, you know, God's no different. He created us in his image. And so we need to feel him. We need to commune with him. We need to hold his hand. We need to talk to him. We need to listen to him. You know, sometimes uh, this may come as a shock to those that know me well, but I love to talk. I love to talk. I'm a talker. I'm a conversationalist is what I call it. It makes it sound a little nicer. But I love to talk, and sometimes I talk so much I don't hear. And so, you know, it's like the Lord said, Linda, there's so many things we've got to change. I'm going to take care of this situation, so don't worry about the situation. This came to teach you about faith. And I thought, okay. I, I believe that because I believe that I, all of God's people, I believe I'm not the only one. There are some out there that have great faith, but there are some that just concentrate on so much other stuff that they don't concentrate on getting in the word, digging in it, and praying. And I lack in some of those areas. God help me. Mark 4.48, he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And I began to think about Peter as he was walking out on the water. You know, he um, he had faith. He knew the Lord wouldn't let him drown. But see, when he got out there on the water and he started feeling the waves, and maybe his foot just started sinking just a tip bit. And the other disciples might have been even saying, Watch out, Peter. You... 
Watch out, you're, you look like you're sinking. And so as he looked down, I'm not saying they said that, but I'm saying it could have been said. And as he looked down to see if he was sinking or feeling what he was doing, then he began to sink. So we gotta keep our eyes focused on God. And you know what? No matter how he answers, it. when my uncle was sick and in hospice, I wanted to go see him. And I prayed for him. I prayed for him every day. And I really thought God was going to bring him out of there. I thought, I'm going to see him walk out of this hospice. And it's going to be a great testimony. And I just had that much faith. But he died. And the night me and my dad went to the hospice to see him and be with my family, I, I stood there and they were all crying and I thought, God, why? Why did you not answer this prayer? Because I really thought you would. I thought you would. And, and I thought, you know, God, I can't question you because you know what's best. And you know the timing of everything. But I thought, you know, when God doesn't answer just like that we want him to, it don't mean he didn't answer. It just means he didn't give us the answer that we were expecting, the answer that we wanted. And you may say, well, Linda, that don't make no sense. You prayed for healing, and he didn't get healed. He didn't walk out of there. But you know what? God has a time for all of us. It's only us that's left here on earth to be without the loved ones that have gone on that suffer. When God takes his people home, it's really a day to rejoice. You know, scripture says to mourn at a birth and to rejoice at a death of a saint. You know, and I, I never did quite comprehend it. I thought, well, that's horrible. We always rejoice when a baby's born. I remember when Christopher was born, it was such a, a, a good day, you know, to know that there was this baby and he was mine. And, you know, it was kind of scary too, but it was a day that we had this baby. It was life. But death comes too. And so faith is something that is so hard to grasp sometimes. And scripture says that every man has measure. All of us that serve God have a measure of faith. And we have got to use it. You know, the Lord's showing me more and more and more things. And I appreciate him. I appreciate what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing with my life. I have no idea where he's taking me. I just know that I'm following, and, and I'm following sometimes blindly, but that's faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, is what Scripture says. I never fully comprehended that until I began to think about everything that happens. You know, we, we have a goal and we want things to happen, but God will design, your life is designed in the master's plan. There used to be a course, an old course we used to sing about, put your life into the master's hand, put your life into his master plan, for he has a work for you that only you can do. So put your life into the master's hand. And I was thinking about that today and I thought, you know, no matter what happens, life, death, trials, just valleys that we walk through, we have got to keep our faith. And you know, the, there's some great people in my life that I think handle things so well. I've never seen anybody just handle it so graciously. Things that come into their life, they've lost brothers and sisters and, and dads, and, and yet they still, they'll say, well, you know, they're, they're rejoicing with the Lord, or they're, the Lord knew what he was doing. And I thought, that's the place we have to get to. We have to know God knows what he's doing. It was no shock for him when you arrived at your situation. It was no shock for him when I arrived at my situation. So God is in control. He is in control no matter what happens. He is, it's in his plan. We just have to follow it. We have to be willing to let go and let God. And when it's not the answer that we want ourselves, we have to still let go and let God. 
So today, build up your faith. I'm building up mine. It, it, like I said, um, my cousin Jimmy used to tell me, she'd say, you're feeling good right now, but the devil's going to come along and discourage you just a little bit. So hold on to what you have at this minute in time. So the same for you. Hold on to your faith. Don't let go. No matter what the doctor says, no matter what the lawyer says, no matter what the IRS says, no matter what anything says, God is in control, and he's got you right in the palm of his hand. I remember one time um, there was a pastor's wife, and I was telling her about a situation, and she said, you know what, Linda? God's got us right in the palm of his hand. So I'm thankful today. So let's go and walk in faith. Let's keep building it up. We just have to have a grain of mustard seed of faith, and let's build it from that. We don't want to keep it at that. We want to just keep on building. So let's have faith and see what God's going to do.